At a glance, the 64 appears to follow the blueprint for every other model in Absolute's quirky Navetta Rage. Its styling is bold, shall we say, the interior hugely spacious, and the IPS drivetrain expertly integrated, delivering smooth, quiet, relatively efficient performance. Prices start at just shy of 2 million euros, but our test boat with extras such as a Seakeeper and hydraulic bathing platform came in at 2.7 million euros, excluding VAT. The difference with this model, however, is what's going on at the transom. More of that later. But first, how does it drive? Now this being an absolute, you only have Volvo Penta IPS engine options. You can have IPS 1200, or you can have IPS 1350. This particular boat has got the larger IPS 1350, and that's meant a top speed today in lumpy-ish conditions of around 24 knots. But really, IPS suits this boat very well, this style of boat, the Navetta range, because it's not about outright performance, nor is it about handling. It's about covering long distances quietly and efficiently. And this boat can equally travel at 10 knots as comfortably as it can 22 if you're in a bit more of a hurry. And what I really like is, despite the fact that it sort of has long range intentions, you have a really good ergonomically sound helm position. So you can stand really comfortably like I'm doing now with the wheel really close to you, same with the throttles, but you can sit comfortably too because you've got two fully adjustable helm seats. You're nice long way forward in the boat as well, so the view out, you can really see the wave pattern and you can move the boat accordingly. And you've got these two enormous Garmin 22 inch MFDs where all of the boat information is fed to you and obviously you can customise that any way you wish. But it's always impressive with Absolute how much focus they put on the driver, even on a boat of this style. Now, as I said, it's not a boat built for handling. It's IPS, so it's very light. It's very easy steering to move around, but it's a little bit numb, and really there's not a huge amount of pleasure in throwing this boat around, not that you'd really do much of that. The other thing is, although this raised position is great for looking forward here at the helm, you're a couple of steps up from the main deck. Looking back, you do have a few blind spots because you're that bit higher than the windows in the saloon. So you're gonna wanna have people sort of stationed down there looking out for you if you need to make a hard turn and you're down here at this helm. Of course, you also have a flywheel helm where the view is magnificent. So in good weather, you'd probably rather be up there, but it's nice that you've got this proper helm station down here to use if the weather isn't so good. Now we're actually gonna start here in the master cabin because it's a pretty special space. It's forward on the main deck and just look at the size of these windows either side here. Mountains of natural light can flood in. It's got a lovely flat floor as well and plenty of headroom too, so it's very easy to move around in. Some nice touches as well, like the fact you've got the bureau here, some storage down this side, a big hanging locker as you come into the cabin. And then right forward is where you find the ensuite bathroom. And that's really nice as well. Lovely finish in there and a big separate shower cubicle too. However, the rest of the accommodation is pretty nice as well. So then out of the master cabin and down a little run of steps here, we're down onto the lower deck where the guest accommodation is. Now what's nice about this layout is they've used sliding doors so that they don't gobble up loads of space either inside the areas or in the hallway. So you can really open up so if a family's staying on board they can leave all this open and sort of wander in between bathrooms and cabins and this is the day heads. But it's also en suite to this twin here on the starboard side and then you have a pretty special VIP cabin aft as well. I should think guests will be very happy in here. Again, headroom's really good, well over six foot, flat floor as well, easy to move around. You've got this wonderful ensuite as well, again with sliding split doors, so it can be open plan to this cabin if you want it to be, but you can also partition off the toilet area. You've got a separate shower cubicle on this side as well. It has this big hull window as well, so there's plenty of natural light coming in here, and it's got its own opening port, so you don't have to rely on the air conditioning if you don't want to. It's even got a walk-in wardrobe with hanging storage and a safe. And then forward, there's a void obviously because you've got the master cabin slightly raised up here. There's a void underneath it, but that space has not gone to waste because they have created a very useful utility space down here. It's where the washer dryer is. There's loads of extra storage as well, shelving down here, bit of cupboard storage down here. And inside this cupboard, you've got bespoke storage for a Dyson vacuum cleaner, though it is a thousand euro option, which is a bit cheeky. And then through here, it's not lit, but there's even more storage. So that goes right forward. You can actually see the bow thruster from here, but again, it's all shelved off. So you can just use it for storing kit. Really useful extra space. 
Now we'll head back onto the main deck in a minute, but this little area here is quite important because it's where you have all of the boat's electronic functions. It's where you see the batteries, it's where you see shore power connection, generator, and it's all the manual switching for all of the boat systems as well. So if you have to override the digital system, which we'll look at in a second, it's all here, very easy to access. You also have a wine fridge in this spot too. So Absolute are big fans of an aft galley layout and this Nevetta 64 is no different. The galley is there towards the aft end of the saloon so it connects really easily with the cockpit. It also has a window that goes up and down electrically so you can open it up even more, create a bit of a bar area between the two spaces. And that means that inside your lounging area is here, sort of amidships. And it's a really sociable space. It's not just sort of two opposing benches like a dentist waiting room. They've got this nice L-shaped sofa here around this coffee table, a 5,000 euro extra in itself. And then this nice comfortable armchair here as well. And this is where you get the benefit of these huge windows, which as an addition have electric blinds. So they're just one touch, hit a button, and the blinds come down and you can adjust their angle as well, which is quite nice. The other thing to point out is, we haven't got the air conditioning on today, it's a warm day, but because you've got the big side door at the helm, you've got an electric window, a big electric window on this side, and you can obviously open the cockpit doors. You do get a nice flow of breeze through here, so you don't always have to rely on the air conditioning unless it's really warm. A closer look at the galley then. The first thing is this glass panel here, you can drop that if you want. Just one touch button again, that sinks down. You've got marble tops here, you can have chrome, but this boat's got marble, which is a nice addition. And nice to see a proper handhold inset in this bar as well. You've also got a four burner induction hob, combi oven down here, and full size domestic fridge freezer and bespoke storage for the boat's crockery and glassware on this side. A couple of steps here to the helm station. I really like this L-shaped seating area here, so two more people can join those and these seats if you're making passage in bad weather. And then what's really nice is this boat's digital management system. You have everything here at your fingertips from the tank levels to the, the bilges. You've got all of the boat's sensors here as well, so you can see if any alarms are going off. You control all the boat's lights from here, navigation lights, and there's an all off option as well. So if you just wanna turn the boat off and go, you have one button to press, which is quite nice. And you also have control of the air conditioning from up here too. Now this open bulwark look is quite new for the Nevetta range, but it's a nice effect, especially from here in the cockpit where it means you can still see the water if you're sitting down. They haven't forgotten the practical stuff though. You've got really nice mooring gear here, really chunky, good multi-directional fair lead. You've also got a winch so you can tighten the lines more easily. And on both sides, you've got opening boarding gates, well half boarding gates, so that if you're side two, you can get on and off more easily and don't always have to go down onto the bathing platform. Obviously this space is great, really, really nice, spacious area this. And this is where you see this connection here with this bar area between this area and the galley. But one feature I really like here is this. Now it's not unusual to have controls for the boat back here, certainly for boats that are based in the Mediterranean. You have got your joystick and you've also got bow and stern thruster controls here. But absolutely, we've even fitted a mini Garmin screen here with a camera on it, so you have a really good view forward. You can see what's in front of you if you're controlling the boat from back here. You also have dedicated storage for the boat hook. The flybridge is a really good size on the Nevetta 64. I really like this area here at the stern. They look like they're fixed, but they're not. They're modular, they're weighted down though, so they're not gonna move around too much at sea, but it means you can configure these seats however you want them. There's also a shade that can pop out from here and give you a little bit of shade there if it's a really sunny day. And the central bit, again, nice big seating area with enough space around the outside to put some freestanding chairs. Opposite the bar, which has got the usual things, grill, sink, fridge, ice maker, etc. This big hard top is an option. I don't think they'll build any without it because it's a really nice hard top and it's also got an inset fabric sunroof. So again, you can put a bit more sunlight into this area if you want to on a good day. And then we'll look at the helm station as well because that's a really nice spot. And the reason I like this helm so much is a lot of the same reasons that I like the one downstairs. It's really good ergonomically. For a boat that is just gonna be, you know, point to point cruiser, they do put the driver in the action. Everything is adjustable. This seat slides fore and aft. It's got a bolster function as well. The steering wheel moves up and down so you can adjust the angle of that. The throttles are really close. You can sit back in your chair and use everything without having to lean forward. And again, everything is fed to you by these amazing 22 inch Garmin screens and that mirrors everything that you've got downstairs. You've got some storage space down here for loose items and a cup holder. They've even put in a wind deflector here, so a scooter style wind deflector that can slide up to give you a bit more protection from the wind. And though this is just a single seat, you have got seats arranged around you where people can relax on passage and keep you company. 
Now the foredeck follows the usual trend of having a settee up here as well as a sun pad. The only thing I say about this area is that everything is set quite low. Not too much of an issue with the sun pad, but it does mean that these could be a little bit uncomfortable to sit at if you're sitting around the table. The table does pop up more, it's just in travel mode at the moment. But there's still some good practical thinking up here. You've got pop-up lights on either side, you've got little wells in the mouldings for, for loose items and a couple of cup holders. You've also got a shower up here, a deck shower, so you can wash off the bow if you've got dirty ground lines here in the Mediterranean. And there's two nice big storage voids either side for covers and lines as well. Now that master cabin forward is pretty spectacular, but there's actually another contender for the best cabin aboard this boat. And that is back here in the transom. This is the beach club option, 75,000 euros set up as the beach club as you can see now but if you remove these cushions and flip this section forward hey presto you've got a bed you've got a fridge in here you've got a tv you've got charging sockets lights reading lights everything you'd expect from a cabin decent sized bed but it opens up here onto the transom and we're not getting the best effect here inside the marina but you can imagine if you're anchored in a bay underwater lights on hydraulic platform and you could step out of bed and straight into the water for a swim Pretty special really. And then in the day, you can set it up like this. You can air condition it in here as well. Access to drinks and stuff, as I said. It's also got a bathroom in here, so you can shower off in here and use the loo as well. And it also has access to the engine room through a watertight door. And that's a key point. This is a watertight compartment. Obviously these doors are in quite an exposed space, but there is a pneumatic gasket that seals them when the boat's at sea. Now this is the easiest way to gain access to this engine room, though there is another access point which is through a big hatch in the cockpit. There's a ladder down there so you can drop quickly down between the engines in an emergency if you need to make a quick check. As you can see, for a six footer, not quite standing headroom, but it's not bad and actually the floor drops down a bit between the engines so you use a bit more space there as you, if you're working in between them. Quite a bit of space taken up by the sea keeper here, it's a, a gyroscopic stabiliser in the middle of the engine room there and you have generators out on either side. Fuel tanks either side too, notice you've got two filters so you can switch across if one gets blocked. It'd be nice if these were clear so you could check the quality of the fuel by eye, but grey cores are nice. And then you have pod drives of course as well, so you have access to those down here towards the back of the engine room. This intrusion is the beach club, hence why it's not a great amount of space above here, but it's still not too bad and as I said access to the pods isn't too bad either. Now if you don't have the beach club, you just get storage down there in the transom. But even if you do, you still get a crew cabin and a pretty decent one. Access is via this full height door here. You have a staircase that leads down into it. Headroom's pretty good when you're down there as well. You get a berth and a separate bathroom. Thank you very much for watching our review at the Absolute Nevetta 64. If you enjoyed it, please do click the like button, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get a notification every time we upload a new video. I'll see you on the next one.